Welcome to the audio experience of KimberlySueIverson.com, a redhead rewriting reality and multi-genre author. I am your host, Kimberly Sue Iverson, and today I'll be sharing with you a story that's close to my heart. If you prefer to read along or explore more stories, visit my website at KimberlySueIverson.com. This audio experience is for an adult audience. Themes and topics may not be appropriate or suitable for all audiences, so listener and viewer discretion is advised. Now, get yourself comfy as we dive into today's tale. Am I ahead? Not even close. I always think I'll get ahead with these. I did pretty good in the beginning. At least I'd have one a week ahead of time. And then we're here. I decided to try to get two of these up at once. So I'm doing this right after I did last week's post on permission. Out of nowhere, we have been hit with some stinky wildfire smoke too from I think the Bolt Creek fire. It was what came up when I searched for whatever could be affecting us. This air isn't like the other day. The other day there was a slight scent of campfire smoke. This is a scent almost akin to burning tires. It's very gross. Making some of the dogs get antsy. I had the windows open and was going to shut them but realized that would be a bad idea. I'd keep the air in the house. So I am hoping it dissipates soon. It hit pretty fast. This post is going to be a bit different as well. Like the other day, I shared an older post that I did while I was working through my writing area, and I used it for inspiration for a post too. Well, this one is going to give sort of a lesson on writing. I often think about how to help new writers come up with ideas or I want to be able to create a lesson plan for people to take, a course if you will. One day to provide similar help I received from people like Holly Lyle, who I learned a lot from and took a lot of courses from. But this idea came to me one night where I thought not only would it help showcase how I often come up with ideas in a simple manner, but then offer suggestions for others and even show the process of story creation for me. Out of some random prompt that comes to mind, out of some random prompt I see, out of some random words. You want to offer some, feel free. And show that even that can easily spur the brain. I should clarify and make clear though that I am not new to doing this. So my brain can easily get flicked on with little effort into creating something a story in this case, a short story also in this case. This isn't to say that if you are supremely new to writing, that with one word, you can go off on a story. This also isn't to say that you can't. I'm just making clear that I acknowledge I have done this for over 20 years by now and published my work over 11 years ago so I have practiced and I have experience 
One thing that can always bother me are people who've been at this for over 20 some years saying it's super easy to do what they do. Anyone can do it. And if not, they fail in some way. You can, but if you can't do it or struggle to, maybe you just need practice, a shift in the type of writing you do, fiction or nonfiction, novels or shorts, fiction or blogging, or maybe you're not actually a writer. Maybe it's just the world you fit in and you can do other things in it. Or the writing world isn't for you at all. I'd seen far too many say they are writers, call themselves writers, and in over 10 years still say they are, but there is no real progression in it. In a way that I get a sense that they want to be one, or be in the world of writing somehow, but they're just talking. Many say, few do. Each person is different. Each of our paths is unique only to us. But always acknowledge in you that if you want to do something and after 10 years you're still puttering about it, and it's just some random thing you're poking at but not really engaged in, maybe it's just not the direction to take. That's okay too. What I will do is show the process of how this comes about before I write a short story around it. You will see it now, right here, in action. I am not editing this piece. I am not editing myself. I am not adjusting this. So if a weird question comes up in my mind, I will write it down. This is how it happens. You are going to see it live and you are welcome to fill in the questions that you think of in the comments. Then process to write something, anything, that comes to mind for you too. Use this as a prompt. Use this story as a prompt. If you do though, it'd be nice to have the credit and link back, but this is public so you'll do as you please with it. Just know, since it is public and will be timestamped on the post, the internet will be able to search it out super easy if you try to play off the original story as your own. I will be writing this story as I do all of this too, not thinking of anything but the prompt, not going anywhere to search anything, unless I forget a word and need a reminder of what word I'm thinking of. I'm also doing this sort of to help my writing bug. Maybe I just don't want to work on the sorceress world yet. Since I like to play, we shall play together. Come join in my sandbox and I will tell you a story just for you. You can play too in the comments, whether with your own inspiration from the prompt or comments on the story. Not critiques on the writing, but comments on the story. I'm not asking nor wanting editing critiques. This is all play. For all of us. So here goes. So I am calling this, when I do it, this could be the first and last time, story creation game. I will enter a prompt, in which case this one is, I spy a stain. Next, I ask questions based on my favorite things on the planet. These I ask now for everything I write in fiction form. It helps me create ideas, come up with thoughts and stories. Also, 
Don't be afraid to ask your character these things or people who know your characters, as I had to do with Stone from the Guardian of Life world. I had to ask others about him because his grunts and threatening looks not conducive to character detailing. If you're thinking I'm joking, wait until you encounter a character like that. Your brain will play them up and not play with you. If you have had a character like that, tell me. How'd you open them up? The questions are who, what, where, why, when, how, and what if. Then I write the questions that come down. Who made the stain? What sort of stain is it? How long has it been there? Why doesn't the stain go away? When did it start? What if it's ongoing because there's something causing it again and again? Where did it come from? And finally, I write. Remember, this is not edited. This is first draft. This is instantly written as I think of this stuff. Free write story. No plan. Amanda Sterling stared at the stain on the ceiling. I was becoming familiar with that stain. It had been there for a while at this point. It seemed adamant about remaining there. I watched my husband clean it, and it went away. I watched it come back. I watched it change shape. I watched it darken, lighten, disappear when once again it was cleaned. I watched it for years. It simply remained. Stubborn, solid, appearing, disappearing. Maybe we should call someone, I pointed out one day over breakfast. My husband stared at me. Call someone. He took it as an insult. I couldn't blame him. I understood. Wanting me to hire out help when he was fully capable of handling it on his own was an insult to his ego. He had a grand one at that. I suspected he didn't want anyone in the house either. As long as we'd been married, I'd never seen an actual repairman here. Outside of him. He said they came. I never saw them. How could that be possible when I was often here? I'd know. I'm pretty sure I'd know. Wouldn't I? I remained neutral as I said, yes. It wasn't about him at this point. It was about a stain that was growing to be an agitation to me. I was annoyed by seeing it there all the time. Our attic wasn't that large. At least, I thought so. I was forbidden from going up there and checking it out. Alec was concerned I would hurt myself and had pointed out on many occasions how much pain it would cause him to see me hurt. You don't believe I can get rid of it? He asked me, adjusting in the chair to regard me. There was that initial defensive position. Sliding his chair out, raising a single arm to hook over the back edge. I think you're fully capable of that, I tried to explain, as if I had a chance against him. 
I simply stated, maybe you needed additional help to completely end the problem. I tipped the coffee cup to my lips to say no more. One eyebrow cocked at that. I've told you plenty of times, Amanda. I will deal with it. Don't worry yourself over it. You have plenty to worry over. He eyed my breakfast I'd finished with a hint of approval, then raised his eyes to mine. That stain is not one. End of discussion. He got up and left the table, leaving me to clean it all up while he got ready for work. I eyed his barely touched breakfast. He rarely ate much. Once he told me it was a condition he had issues with. Food in him didn't mix. But if I'd done similar, he would have hounded me to finish. It was always important for him to see me eat all my food, and healthy food at that. When I was done with breakfast, I left the room and stared at the stain on the ceiling. Would he really, though? Would he handle it? As he'd been handling it all this time? Why would he tell me again and again not to go up there? I waited. I was patient. Then he left the house. I was no longer patient. When I sat in my chair, and again I saw it there, slightly darker than normal, my patience dwindled. It haunted my every move. I was tired of it. Walking over to the living room window, I saw his truck gone. He'd gone to work. He'd be gone for hours. Normally, I would be a good little wife and do as my husband told me, more so because of that temper of his. But unlike him, I was the one home all day and staring at the stain got on my last nerve. So once I saw that truck of his gone, I decided to go up to the attic and see what was causing the stain for myself. As I pulled down the stepladder, my heart began to pound, almost as if Alec trained me well, to have zero interest in defying him, in going up there. But I was a determined woman, and when I set my mind to something, only one could really stop me and he wasn't here. I steeled myself and slowly climbed up the stepladder, step by step. I carefully made my way to the top and reached over for the switch to the small light bulb above me. It flickered on and illuminated the area I was in, but just barely hit where the stain was. Where that stubborn stain lay, there was only shadow. Of course you won't light up the area I need most. At the sound of my voice, I heard movement. My heart leapt into my throat. Are there rats up here? Oh my, maybe that's why he didn't want me up here. For a time I debated as I climbed back down the ladder, my heart thudding faster and faster. When at the bottom, rationale kicked back in, and I thought of that stain. Rats? An injured rat? No, couldn't be. My mind conjured a million ideas to the point I even considered an alien from a far-off galaxy. I need to stop this. If I didn't get a hold of my mind, I'd never be able to relax in my chair again. With a sigh, I went in search of my phone or a flashlight, whichever was closest. 
Fortunately for me, it was my phone. Perfect. Now that would light up everything for me. I went back to the window to check out front. Not that I expected Alec to show until dinner time, but something kept niggling at me. Something felt wrong. Off. I couldn't figure out why. I went back to the ladder and slowly made my way up once more. I grabbed one of the rafters to help myself stand up in the attic near the entrance, only a step inside, just in case there were rats or some other animal. I wanted to be able to run other animals. How silly was I? Did I think a deer would be laying up here? With a shake of my head to myself, I opened my phone, pulled down my notification bar, and tapped the flashlight. Instantly, my feet were illuminated in a brilliant light. I heard that sound come again. Like a shuffling noise. I twitched and the phone jiggled and wiggled, making the light bob all over the place. I nearly dropped the sucker. Rats and me simply don't mix. It would entirely make sense my husband would tell me to avoid this space. A small whimper hit my ear. What the? That didn't sound rat-like. That sounded human. My heart lodged tightly in my throat and the light began to wiggle on my feet. A chill ran down my body and I could barely move, let alone breathe. Something deeper told me not to move the flashlight. I didn't want to see what was over there. My hand worked of its own accord. My breathing came faster and faster as the phone quivered in my hand. I turned the phone to illuminate the shadowy area where that light bulb couldn't. I saw a pair of bare feet in chains. A small tremor passed through me. The feet shifted and I knew the source of the sound I'd heard. I shook like crazy as I moved the light up, up, up. I saw a woman in a dress, much like the one that adorned my body, the one Alec wanted me to wear. A shudder passed through me. A sound I didn't know what to make of that was a combo of disgust, pain, fear, and so much slipped out of me. The body shifted again. Her face was tucked down into her body, avoiding the light. She was chained and bound right over where my chair was. How? How could I never have heard a body up here? Worse, who was she? She was so thin, the dress barely hung on her frame. Pale, depleted, her hair color was like mine too. Pure instincts kicked in and I rushed to her side knelt down only to scare her into further curling into herself with a whimper. Oh, she may think I was Alec. Oh, no. Quickly, the words rushed out of me. No, no, it's okay. I whispered as if I needed to. I'm not Alec. Are you okay? Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Of course you're not. I carefully reached out to brush the hair from her face. 
Once I did, I nearly fell back on my butt. Drawn eyes, sunken sockets, hollow cheeks. She looked like a corpse. There was some sort of IV in her arm, hanging from the ceiling. A few different things that were keeping her alive. For a moment, I remained frozen. Alec did this? He was doing this to her? I... I just couldn't even believe it. I reached over to slide my fingers over her wrist. Faint, but there, a pulse. Not that I thought she was dead. She'd moved, after all. With my heart pounding, the words rushed out, I'll call for help. I went to flip the flashlight off her and call for help when the light flickered over her arms, then neck. I froze. Oh, God. A soft mumble came from her lips. A raspiness from not having had water and spoken in a while. I leaned down to her ear. What? In the faintest sound, a leaf-crackling noise, her voice whispered, I snapped back, and the flashlight on my phone flickered over the wounds on her arms and neck. Bite marks. As if I'd been lit on fire, I spun as I turned to run and yanked my phone up to call for help, too. The signal was dead up here. A shadow fell over the screen. My head snapped up. I dropped my phone. The light illuminated him from the ground up, making his appearance more grotesque, which is how he looked anyway. In a sad tone, as if I was in the wrong, Alex said, I thought I told you I'd deal with the stain. I went to reply, and nothing came out. My entire body was shaking. From behind me, I felt it more than heard it. In my soul, her word screamed. Run. Alex's eyes twitched toward the woman. You always asked me why she and I didn't work out. A sly grin raised his lips. She tired of the stain, too. She wasn't the first. This was his ex. He'd done this before. All at once, my life with him flashed before my eyes. His insistence on me eating right, eating all he'd given me, wore the clothes he wanted me to, took care of my health to an extreme degree. When we're healthy, you can keep us around longer, I spat out in disgust. The sly grin raised into a grotesque smirk, revealing the teeth he'd been using to feed off his ex, off all the women he'd done this to before. Monster, I said with disgust. You have no idea, babe, he stated, stepping toward me. I shoved past him and felt the give. I spun toward the exit behind him, and a thrill went through me, until I felt the hand latch tight on my arm. A scream came, but was cut off by his hand over my mouth. 
You're just in time, Alex purred in my ear. She was starting to lose flavor. But you, you have just hit your peak. His lips pressed to my earlobe from behind in a gentle kiss, as if he genuinely loved me. More so, now that you've got an additional package. A whimper burst out of me. No! A deep, rumbling sound that drowned out all I knew raised from his chest, echoing in my ear before I felt pain. Nothing but searing, hot pain in my neck. A tug came through me as I screamed and battled him, but his grip was deep and secure. Again, that tugging sensation came, and I began to feel cold. Too cold. Too weak. I shuddered as the dark wings of unconsciousness came hurtling toward me. All I was aware of was falling, falling deep into an abyss of darkness, where the pain and fear were only just beginning. The End All right. Wasn't expecting that story to end that way. When the thoughts came up and the end, I thought we'd see and discover him, or he'd catch her and then we'd be done. Creepy. And, of course, my short went horror. Why wouldn't it? I'm trying to train brain to stop, but yeah. More to come. Thank you so much for reading and subscribing, or listening in this case. I know how valuable your time is, so it means so much that you are here, and I am beyond grateful you chose to spend this time with me. What are your thoughts? Engage with me and start a conversation. Just don't be rude about it. If you'd like a chance for your story to be read and featured, get in touch at stories to read at KimberlySueIverson.com. A new episode and blog is dropped every Wednesday on KimberlySueIverson.com or on YouTube under Kimber Bites. That's K-I-M-B-E-R-B-I-T-E-S, Kimber Bites. And don't forget to check out my Ream subscription page. Another chapter is up. I am releasing Guardians of the Void chapter by chapter over on Ream right now. I will be releasing my Priestess World as well soon, Long before the public gets the books, you'll be able to read the chapters as I write them and help with the world. You'll get to read extra scenes that may not make the cut either. This is still being thought out on how I will, so they haven't been posted yet, but stay tuned. Also, that world is still in progress, but I have written almost three books. I'm nearing the end of the third one. That's the one that when you follow me on social media, if you see the updates, that's the one it's about. If I actually do some writing and get all excited, that's typically the world I'm writing in. So check out reamstories.com slash Kimberly Sue Iverson. That's R-E-A-M-S-T-O-R-I-E-S dot com slash K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y-S-U-E-I-V-E-R-S-O-N. Reamstories dot com slash Kimberly Sue Iverson. That link also will be in the description box below unless I completely forget to add it, at which point you can remind me.